All right, so this is one of our portable chargers. All right, so I know you're probably looking at this connection and trying to figure out what it is, or I don't know if you already know what it, um, it looks like or can tell me what that connection is. That's 220, correct. So it is similar to this one that we have right here, where um, the amperage on these are much higher. So it's almost giving you the same charge rate as these devices, but it's just a completely different setup. You can put it in your car. This is the device right here itself. When you install, you would set up, you'd come to the customer's home and you put it in a socket just like this beside the 110. So the reason why you see the connection is like this, where the, the teeth is twisted, is so that you will never go and plug this into a 110. It stops you from being able to plug in anywhere else but a 220. And also, it protects this equipment as well. Because you could go over there and do, don't know that it's a 220 and try to plug in. Oh, yeah. So they made the, the connection different so that only 220 devices will be able to plug into those sockets. What I had to do is I had to buy a, a step-down transformer, mm -hmm. a small device that you plug in the... Um, the device on the 220 leg mm -hmm. and then it converts it to 110. So when I plug into the wall, yeah, that's why you get the lights on there. Oh, but that yeah. can't charge it. That can't charge it. No. Just display. no. It can probably charge, but it would be like almost like trickle charging. Oh, slow, very okay. slow. Super slow. Or yeah. Like, like when you have a mismatched USB or something. Yeah, charge. yeah. So you'd have that error message probably would come up and say it's too low to charge, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But this is just for demonstration purposes. So I have it so that we can light it up, fool around with the app and have oh. you guys see and interact with the, the interface, right? All right, so, um, where were we again? Yeah, so as I was saying, this device, um, we, it's mostly can be, so what we'll do is go to the customer home, set up a socket like that for them, where they have a direct 220, and they're able to plug in and get a faster charge, especially for the electric vehicles. Some people have a, a country home or, you know, some villa or something and they want to go down for the weekend but they don't want to have a whole entire infrastructure put in place which would be to install one of those on the walls we just put in a socket they drive with this in the car and when they get there they plug it um so it's it's similar charge rate um you can actually just use this as a portable you throw it in your car it's easier to come to log around with than pulling this off of the wall and carrying it with you <laughs> all right so um, for the next one, the 110 connection, which is trickle charge as we had discussed before, right? So this, as you can see, it comes with the exact um, connection to plug directly into the wall right there. So um, if one of you guys want to plug it in, you can plug it in and check it. So, so there you go. So as you see, as you plug it in, you see it, it immediately lights up and it actually gives you... Yeah, so it gives you the 15 amps, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is only 110. Um, for some of the units, you, you might find that it have a switching mechanism. So I have a unit similar to this one that can also ramp up to 32. Gentlemen, so I was explaining to her that there's a button right here, right? For some of the other units, I have some similar to this. Let me just bring it back over here. Yeah, so for, for some of these, we have another unit that it comes with this end. It comes with an end just like this. And then it has a short cable that you can actually take off and plug onto here and it converts it over to 110. So you can use this as a 220 or a 110 device. And the switching mechanism would be this button right here. You press it and it can switch to 32 amps or 15 amps. Oh, so which button is this right here oh, okay. so you can switch it in between so this one also has the same capability if you plug it in and you press the button you will be able to switch between the amperage so automatically so if you want it to step down the amperage you will you can the vehicle will also do that for you as well but if you want it to step down the amperage and plug it into a 110 you can buy the adapter push it onto here and plug it into a 110. all right um let's run through now um i wanted to have you guys look at the the different circuits, right? All right, so usually you have L1, L2, 
and PE, right? Uh, I don't know if you guys know what L1 and L2 is the two live mm -hmm. power, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. So the one, each leg would be, you know what voltage? 110, 110 to give you 220, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then this would be your neutral or ground. So it's the same concept. Once it, the, the power comes in, which is your live and live mm -hmm. and your neutral, mm -hmm. power comes in and you have this setup from your panel coming down. Once the power comes in, there are regulators that it go through to, and then it transforms over to the output. And it's the same setup, same connections that will apply. So I, I've brought a cable for a demonstration as well. Um, on the cables, it gives you the L1, L2, which is 110 and 110, the two lives, and your ground. Ground is normally um, yellow and green on all of these equipment. No, that's the American standard? No, it's just, it's, it's just the, the norm. They normally have these as the, um, the ground. Um, these are also, even though they're not red and black, mm -hmm. they are um, L1 and L2 as well. So um, your user manual, when you're doing the installation, if you look in the user manual, it would tell you if it does not list, if it's not labeled on here, mm -hmm. you can just look in the user manual and you will be able to tell what they are. Um, but being a, a certified electrician, are you going through and doing the courses? These things will come natural to you, but always still check with your user manual. <laughs> yeah, so some guys will be like, yeah, man, this is a positive, this is positive, just plug that in. However, just still take a glance and the, the, you might never know if they changed technology yesterday and <laughs> it's something completely different. So when you're making that connection now, you would go back in and it's so, everything is so straightforward. As you can see, it, lists, it labels right here L1 and L2, right? You put back the same connections, you remove these pins and put the connections in and you screw them back down, bolt down, right? automatically then you'll be able to start using your your charger um this cable here is normally um for this is this unit does not come with a display screen like this one so this would normally give you a light code for tell you if there is any warnings any problems this is one of our older first models okay, okay. um so what this did had it had like a green light if it's it's solid green light if it's not being used mm -hmm. once it starts charging it usually gives you a flashing green light and if it has any errors, it will give you um, an yeah. orange light. And if it, there is an emergency situation where something is really wrong, it will give you a red light. <laughs> We're going to have long enough to see that red light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you go and you see the equipment on a red light, you just don't touch it. You yeah. just disconnect all power immediately. So like usually, is I feel like when I'm controlling it, like I can turn, turn it, like it turns on and off. This is the off. open and closed circuit that I was telling you about. Um, whenever you decide to like if you or, or anybody decides to sell a charger and you want to um, provide a charger to a customer, yeah. always check and make sure that it has a label that certifies that it's, it's certified. Wait, this is like a major certifying body like you yes. Oh, correct. I see it on it. Yeah, oh. so it's a certifying body that certifies all electrical components. <laughs> what you might find though is that some companies might not have the, on the external. Yeah. However, if you look on the internal components, oh, it might have, it oh, might have okay, it. Okay, okay. Yeah, because um, what happens is that when you create a prototype of something, mm -hmm. um, normally this gov same governing body, mm -hmm. you would submit the to internal. The, the, in, the, 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 the preliminary design. sketch and design, you would submit to them now, right? And mm -hmm. once they, you submit it to them, they would say, okay, we authorize these parts okay. and they are certified by us. However, when you're completely make, finished making the product, you mm -hmm. should bring it back to us and we should test it oh, and then and certify it. Like oh, okay, so if okay, it's okay. not on the outside, outside yeah, the then never is certified. the whole thing has not been certified. It's just the preliminary setup okay, has yeah, been certified. Okay. But once you see it on the outside, you're 100% sure that this was certified by the institution.